right, everybody. Welcome back to Diamond Niners Weekly. It is Tuesday night of opening week, and once again, we are talking Charlotte baseball. We hope live at the Hayes. This is Nick. I'm joined, as always, by Kevin. What's up, Niner Nation? Producer Brad's over there. Hey, hey. And a uh, little, little change of pace here this week. Uh, we'll get Coach Woody in here, but right now, joining us all the way from Brookhaven, PA, we got sophomore infielder Nate Furman. How we doing, guys? Appreciate you having me out tonight. Oh, man, this is, uh, this, this is big time for us. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put a call out there. So you ought to see what's going on here at the, at the Hayes tonight. Um, Boys have been practicing. They're getting, uh, they're getting off the field. They've been practicing, getting ready for uh, for this weekend. Um, literally going on around us. They're packing up to leave for for Tampa. Like we're 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 in the middle of a move here. So uh, we appreciate them letting us get in their way tonight. And wouldn't you know, in the middle of all that, the technology is just. It's it's after us again. So hey, if you're in the chat out there tonight, uh, first of all, we always love it when you get in the chat and and, and respond to us. So uh, we really need you to do that tonight. Let us know what you let us know if you're getting us. <laughs> it's being it's that kind of night. So let us know that you're out there and that uh, I, I'm we're fairly confident that you can hear us. We're not sure if you can see us. So jump in the chat and let us know how it's going. So. All right, let's get going here. We got Nate Furman, and that's where we're going to start. What's up, Nate? Not too much. Just uh, just getting ready for the weekend. Can't wait. So what do you got going on this weekend? You getting a little homework done, or what's what's, what's going on with that? Yeah, this weekend is uh, not too much homework. It, it's on the <laughs> schedule, trying to get that in tonight and tomorrow night. So we can, uh, we can clear the schedule for the weekend and, and go to work. Okay, so you're set to to open up your your second campaign as a Niner. Um, what's what's the excitement level right now? What's I mean, how, are you, you trying to keep low key? How do you how do you prepare? Are you you kind of trying to stay low key, or are you just already jacked up? Yeah, just trying to to keep it low key for now. Um, you know, once I think once we step foot in Tampa, it's it's full gas and and no breaks. Uh, you know. We'll, We'll be excited to go. I'm usually one of the most fired up guys on uh, on game day, so I'm uh, I'm bringing out all the tricks this weekend, and and I'm gonna be screaming. So, wait a minute, Big Firm is like one of the most fired up guys on game day, Kevin. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. He's, he gets me fired up right now. <laughs> the 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 upside on this, Kevin, is is we've uh, with with the, some of the issues <laughs> that we're having this week, uh, we've been sitting here. We've had a chance to, to talk to talk to Nate here for a little bit, and um, you know, you've been imparting some wisdom to him about uh, coaching baseball. We've been talking school. We've been talking all kind of stuff, right? So it's um, it's cool, cool to get to catch up. And um, like we say, big firms ratings gold, right? Yeah, our ratings are are going through the roof right now. So. <laughs> We appreciate you, Nate. Um, saw you last Friday at the uh, first pitch dinner. Uh, How did you enjoy that? Did you? Um, what are your takeaways from the event last Friday night? Yeah, I thought that I thought it was a great event. It was really cool, um, you know, to to be there with the guys, obviously, but to see the, some of the alumni come back, um, you know, that's that's the kind of stuff you don't you don't get every day. Uh, you know, getting to talk to some different guys and. And uh, with Seeger being the, the keynote speaker, it was it was really just an awesome night. We had a blast, and um, you know it's just it's one of those nights that you're just grateful to be a part of. Um, you know, grateful to be part of such a, a program with with rich tra- tradition. Um, you know, and just good people. It, it was a room full of good people, and and that's uh, that's a, anything that that a player could ask for. So it was it was an awesome night for sure. Yeah, we had a good time, and um, Nick did a pretty good job himself out there. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> uh, just happy to be a part. Happy to be a part. So you guys are uh, you guys are kicking off the season on on Friday two o'clock um, against Louisville, right? So, um, in, in fact, if we have any if we have any fans and uh, friends and fans tuning in from the Bluegrass State, uh, hey, what's up, y'all? How you doing? Uh, welcome aboard. Um, so what? What you guys are are set to leave on Thursday, right? You're you're flying out on Thursday. Um, you're gonna get down to Tampa, have a little walk through, maybe hit hit some BP on Thursday night. Is that kind of the plan, or, or yeah, have you gotten that far yet? 
Yeah, uh, we'll we'll touch down in in Tampa. Um, you know, we'll head to the hotel, get settled in, and and then we'll uh, we'll get to the field and and get our work in. We'll go through our our usual um, you know pre pre series routine practice wise. So you know, get the legs moving, get some defense in, and and then we'll swing it around the yard and and get ready for the weekend. Cool. So, um, so I, you know, this is the first time we've had you on, and I don't know what took this long, but you know, <laughs> this first time we've had you on, we should have done a long time ago. Uh, you, you'll, you'll come back again before it's all over with. Of course. Um, <laughs> we, we with the process, just talk a little bit about tell tell Niner Nation about your process about becoming a 49er because I mean, you didn't you didn't grow up around here. You're not from the region. But you came, you came south of the Mason Dixon, if you will, to come all the way down to, to Charlotte, North Carolina, and you've become uh, really an important part of the program and the roster. So, um, just talk to people about kind of your process of becoming a Niner. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, I, I think about this all the time. Uh, it was definitely a, a crazy process. You know, being in high school and and being up north, it was it was always just. You know, the recruiting process was always just trying to play you know, with my team and, and play for the guys that, that I was around um, and letting all, all of that stuff take care of itself. Uh, so I, I was lucky enough to, to be able to play for the Evo Shield Canes and, and Jeff Petty and Dan Gitson, um, you know, and I, I think that was that was just amazing, you know, playing with guys from all across the country. Um, and it, it just worked out that, that Coach Woodard took the job here at Charlotte. Um, and it was actually on my birthday. I was, I was at... I was at the movie theaters with my mom. Uh, we were watching The Lion King. The new Lion King came out, and uh, my mom was like, "Listen, we're going to the movies. Like, I, I don't care if you have plans. You know, we're going to the movies today. So clear your schedule." So I was like, "All right, mom, let's, let's do it." So we're we're sitting in the movie theaters, um, and I get a text from Dan Gitson, and it said uh, it was just a contact, and it said Coach Woodard, and he put in the he put below the contact. He said Coach Woodard. From Charlotte, we'll be in contact soon. So I'm watching. I'm watching The Lion King with my mom. I'm like, I can't focus. I look at my phone. I'm like, this is, this is crazy, mom. Like Charlotte, like that's, it's not around here. Like it, <laughs> that's a whole different ball game. So, uh, long story short, I, I came down to a camp uh, with my mom and dad, and we we did a visit the night before, um, which went amazing. And then the camp was great. I didn't really play great. Um, but you know, I'm thankful these guys took a took a chance on me, and and uh, you know, just thankful to be here. It's an amazing place with great people, um, and ready to get year two started. So let me just let me just recap this here. Make sure I have this straight. Your your experience as a Niner started in a movie theater with your mom seeing The Lion King. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's that's pretty solid stuff, Kevin. It's I like mean, a start yeah. to a movie, man. Uh, you know what? I <laughs> go to a movie, folks. Right? That's where that's that's this good stuff. So, which they remade the Lion King? Is that yeah, yeah it was like a live action Lion King? That was the one. Oh. Yep. See, I, I'm way out. Of, you you and your boys probably saw <laughs> that. Oh, yeah, yeah, we sure did. I'm way out of the loop on that. I was, I didn't see that. Pretty good. It was pretty good. Okay. We'll have to get Coach Bick to come in. And, and Coach Bick will come down here and break, break down. We'll give a review, yep. yep. But let me guess, you, you probably don't remember much about the movie after the text came in. You were just <laughs> – Yeah, I mean, my, my mind was going – it was going everywhere. I mean, I I somehow enjoyed the movie with my mom. We had a great day. Uh, you know, I enjoyed the birthday, but, man, that was, that was a good text. <laughs> yeah, that text turned out to, to be one of the craziest and, and best texts I've ever got, so – Tell um, talk a little bit about stepping on campus for the first time because I, I'm gonna tell you I, we talk about this all the time that that um for 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 those of us uh, that have been here and 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 seen so many changes uh, over the years as far as the, the physical campus goes, um, it is hard for um, me or Kevin or, or Brad to to see this place the way people see it with for the first time. Whenever we talk to people that that have never been here. And then they come. They're like, "Oh my gosh, look at this!" Um, I mean, right down to the view from the, from the baseball stadium with with the buildings in the in the background. Um, I don't want to say we don't appreciate it, Kevin. I don't think that's right, but but it's easy for us to miss that, don't you think? It's yeah. being here all the time. It's there's a lot of things we miss that other people see. 
Yeah. yeah. So so we kind of we can look right past things and and, and just kind of take it. But talk about stepping on this campus for the first time and 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 you know just just experiencing what it has to offer. Yeah, it's a it's just a special place. Uh, you know, I I tell me and my parents talk about it all the time. Like, there's nowhere back home that that can that can make it make it feel like like Charlotte at all. It's just. You know, it's an amazing campus, and all of the brick in the buildings, you know, the, the trees and everything, everything is where it's supposed to be, it feels like. You know, like we have we have the little air, like the, the quad down here with the, the athletic fields, um, and then the union and, and everything. It's it's really just amazing, and uh, it's, it's kind of funny that you bring this up because, like, usually once a week, uh, you know, if we're in the indoor – doing something, I'll, I'll walk out of the indoor and I'll try and just like take it in. You know, I'll look, I'll look at the turf and, and look at the trees, um, up to the student union building. And it's just like, it's like, dang, this is crazy. Like I get to, I get to come here every day and, you know, kids would, kids would kill to, to be able to be out here on this field all day with this view. Um, so I, I try and do that once a week and like center myself and, and just think like, this is this isn't Philadelphia anymore. I get it. We're we're in Charlotte, and and this is an amazing place to play baseball and go to school. Um, so yeah, I would say you know when when me and my parents stepped on campus, it was just like a kind of a shock moment. Like it was it was like wow, this is amazing. Like this is really this is a college campus. Like this is you know this is awesome. So it, it was it was unbelievable. And I know when my parents still come into town. They're like, uh, you know, they kind of just take it all in because it's, it's amazing and, um, you know, just just lucky to be here for sure. We can tell you, <clears throat> we can tell you've really embraced being a 49er. Seems like every time we had a football game, our photographer would always find <laughs> find Nate Furman in the front row, getting excited. So it was it, fun uh, seeing those pictures and you out supporting supporting other athletes here on campus. Um, what I wanted to ask you about is your freshman year. You had a, a great freshman year. Um, Talk about that transition from high school ball into the fall here and then starting as a fret well working your way into the starting lineup as a freshman in, here at Charlotte. Yeah, it was it was definitely uh, a culture shock. You know, walking into a locker room with with twenty three, twenty four year old guys, it's like, all right, this is go time. Like you know, it's the they're not gonna wait for you to to get caught up. You know, you, you jump right in there and uh, you know, the coaches were awesome helping me kind of you know, get get acclimated. Um, and one guy that that was great for me was Todd Elwood. Uh, you know, he was. If I ever needed anything, like I leaned on Woody, um, and I, I kind of followed in in his tracks. Just uh, you know, seeing what he did and and the kind of stuff that he did, um, and just trying to to be a good guy. You know, you know, be a good teammate, be a good guy, and I think that's what helped me most. Uh, get acclimated with the guys and and just get get comfortable with everything. Um, but it was definitely a, a transition. But uh, you know the season was great. The, those guys, the the group we had last year and the group we have this year, it's just you know you can tell that that guys come here for a reason and that's to to get to Omaha. So that's the goal and and um, you know being surrounded with guys and and coaches every day that 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 is the goal and that's why guys are here. You know, that's when you realize that. That's when you know it's it's something special. So, you know, that's that's a one of the we, we talk about the with with all the um, you know the guys were talking about their years on Friday night as far as they were a, a COVID sophomore, this and that, and the other thing. Um, with with so many with college baseball being as old as it is, we 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 talk about some of the. Uh, the implications of that, but that's something you brought up. Something I thought there that's important that's kind of overlooked is is you had some guys and, and have had continue to have some guys in the program that have been here for for an extended period of time to to mentor young guys. Sure. I mean, and and you start talking and, and you brought up Todd uh, Elwood and and I could totally see him being you know a great mentor and and that extends out to to right now to to Matt Brooks and Colby Bruce. Right. You know, you can just see guys like that. That, um, being great mentors to the to the you know the young guys coming into the program, and I mean that's that's important for continuity, right? That that kind of gets you 
helps you get up to speed, right? You, you don't have to try to figure it out on your own. They're starting to tell you, you know, we need you, you know, okay, here's what you've got to do. Here's the time commitment you're looking at. Right. So that's that's pretty cool that, that you've had, you know, you've had the opportunity to, to do that. And now, I mean, really, it, it, it feels like you've been here for, <laughs> for quite a while now. So, well, now, well, seriously, now you're, you're in position where you've been through that. Right. And you get the opportunity to kind of impart some things to young guys coming in behind you, right? Yeah, yeah no doubt. That's, that's important for me, too. Um, you know, first and foremost, just trying to be, like, the best teammate you can be. And, and you know, shortly, like, right behind that is, is setting an example for – not even just the guys that that are coming along, the younger guys, but even guys the same age and older. You know, it's like stuff stuff flows and and goes a certain way here. And uh, you know, we call it like the standard. Like the standard is the standard. And and uh, that was one thing I learned last year. You know, like when that standard is kept and and that's how we do things. You know, that's when champions championships come. And and that's where. You know, you get into the good stuff. So that's um, that's definitely important for me. And and the guys are the guys are awesome. You know, everyone everyone does does their part. And and you know, that's why I'm so excited for the season. Is we've worked so hard. Um, you know, not only on the field but just off the field. Like guys are great in the classroom. Guys are doing the right things. Uh, you know, even even something that that me and Kevin were talking about, like t- getting good sleep. You know, we've had we've had conversations about. Guys are trying blue light glasses. Guys are trying, uh, you know, sound music on their phone to, to sleep better. But it's all uh, it's all just fun and games. But you know, Fridays when we go. So yeah, we, while we were sitting here trying to trying to work some things out, um, uh, Nate was giving uh, was giving Kevin sleeping advice about <laughs> how to how to potentially get a little better sleep. Did, did you get some good pointers yeah, there, Kevin? You know, maximize my quality of sleep, hopefully. <laughs> I, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. That's, I mean, that's important. And you know, I, knock on wood, I, I don't have. I'm not having issues with that. When I when I lay down, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> I'm gone. Like maybe even before my head hits the pillow, kind of thing. So what we got to do here is is Nate's been really really generous with his time here. He's been hanging out with us for a little bit, and we've enjoyed every moment of it. But. Um, you know, the, these guys uh, these guys are students, and, and Nate's no exception. He's got some homework he's got to get to because he's going to be a little busy this weekend uh, down in Tampa, Florida. So uh, leave, leave us with leave us with a with a final thought, Nate. What what do you what what's what's Nate Furman going to do this weekend? Let's let's get just 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 you know just be bold. Just tell us what's up. What's what what you going to get done? Yeah, I think uh, I think the only <laughs> thing I can say is. We're ready to go. We're, uh, you know, the guys are locked in. Uh, we got a great, great group of dudes, and and it's uh, it's showtime on Friday. So the guys will be ready. Uh, we're coming full throttle, and um, we're excited to get down there and get to work. I got a question. Are you going with the uh, DMX walk up music this year again? Yep, oh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I'm sticking with it. Uh, you know, my parents like it, so as long as they like it <laughs> and the guys in the dugout like it, I'm good with it. So good. it's a good choice. Man. <laughs> Appreciate that. If it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. All right, Nate. Thank you for your time, man. We're gonna get you out of here and get you off to your homework. Um, can't wait to have you back, man. Appreciate you. Sounds good, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, good luck this weekend. Thank you so much. All right, we're gonna go. We're, we're gonna effort. We're gonna go see if we can we can find Coach Woody. <laughs> and uh, and move him in here for you. Uh, <laughs> he's actually sitting on their side of the room. He's, <laughs> he's giving us a look. He's giving us a look. Heck, he was he was giving us a look the whole time. Nate, Thank you, Nate. Good luck, man. Is this where we pause for station identification? The station or? identification. Our, our, uh, sponsors. We pause for our sponsors. Here. We have, we we should have like a commercial break right here. Yeah, we, we our Grand Slam Club used to be our only sponsor, right? Yeah, now. we haven't done the Grand Slam Club read in a while, so we had to. Could have brought that back, that Great spot job, right there. See you tomorrow. Okay, Woody. So, what's up? Guy, what's going on? <laughs> you know, we're just wrapping up Tuesday here, getting ready for Wednesday. Um, yeah, I think over the years I've, I've learned that kind of this, you know, the, the closer you get to opening day, the easier it is to, to get ahead of yourself. So, we're just – you know, we had a really good practice today. Energy was 
was at a high level. Um, worked on a few, a few new things, just kind of crossing T's and dotting I's on, on a few things. And, you know, we'll get, get back out there tomorrow for our last practice here at the Hayes before we head to South Florida. Guys are ready to get a hold of somebody else, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, that's – so is so is Louisville and so is UConn and so is South Florida. You know, I mean, that's – this is a very, very exciting time of year and it's something that, um, you know, every year that I'm fortunate enough to get to be in baseball, I try to never take it for granted and uh, couldn't be more excited to share a dugout with this group of guys. They've worked extremely hard. Yeah, this is this is the best time of year. Our our favorite time of year. Um, get to you know get started, and it's we we've been well. I mean, in fairness, Kevin. I mean, you, you back me up on this. We've been trying to talk ourselves out of being excited about the season for about what six months? S- six months at least. About you know August. We're talking baseball all the time, right? And and we would be like, well, and well, hold on, we've got six months of the season starts. Let's not get excited, now. but. Heck, we're, we're three days away. Yeah, it's crunch time now, and you can tell all the activity going around the stadium that these guys are getting ready to roll, and uh, it's definitely got me amped up and excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not kidding, folks. We've literally been watching things get packed up <laughs> here at the Hayes while we were, while we were getting ready, so it's, it's go time. Um, we've got a few. Um, we, we, we jumped in with uh, since we got the opportunity to have Nate in here, and we appreciate him stopping by. But um, Kevin, we got a, a few reminders we wanted to bring up. Once you uh, you walk us through that, yeah, just a few uh, housekeeping items. Um, just want to remind everybody that tickets for the Uptown games that the Niners are playing um, March 11th against App State and um, against Davidson on the 23rd are on sale now through the Knights website. Um, also, you can still purchase season tickets uh, through the Fort Niners websites. They have season tickets available. Uh, lower levels almost sold out. There's single game tickets available also, and also ten game uh, ten ticket flex packages uh, available. Um, and once again, uh, thanks to our sponsor, the Grand Slam Club. I don't know if you have that read memorized. I, I, but- I, I, no, I don't. Um, but uh, that's easy enough. Grand Slam Club, uh, this program wants to go to Omaha. In order to get to Omaha, we need resources and tools and and uh, and support. Join the Grand Slam Club, get some cool gear, push the program onward towards Omaha. Yeah, that's that's, that's pretty simple. That's a, a great segue to <laughs> to our next uh, our next topic of discussion. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, coach, we want to get your take. Uh, we've certainly been talking about it ever since uh, ever since Friday night. Um, but we, we the, the the first pitch dinner here was was on campus. Um, you know, we, we we talk about some of these guys that that did such a great job uh, speaking and uh, everything, and all the support, the people that came out. But just to start off with, coach, some some general reaction from you on the the first pitch dinner fr- Friday night. Yeah, I mean, it was it was. Just great to be back around everyone. After la- you know, last year was a virtual event, um, and two years ago was our first you know our first annual event in person. And and so you know to have 150, 175 people back in back in the same room, and you know we're talking about our our, our closest supporters. You're talking about um, you know people that have been following and cheering for Charlotte baseball for a long, long time in that room. And, you know, just to see so many alumni, former players, first and foremost in the room, um, so many of Justin Seeger's friends and teammates and, you know, uh, people like Eric Miller back from the original 49er team in the room and everybody coming together and and celebrating these guys and um, both the program past and present uh, and getting ready for the season. It's just special. And, um you know, it's it's something that we're very excited about continuing to build and furthering, you know, getting further and further beyond, uh, you know, pandemic and to where we have a better understanding of how to navigate things and, and have gatherings and get people in, in the rooms together and, and celebrate this. You know, our goal for next year is to get up over 300. Uh, I mean, so we're already ta- having discussions about that. And, uh, you know, it's an, it's an event that, in my opinion, if – you know, if, if you've got any any uh, level of support of Charlotte baseball, uh, near or far, that you should you should circle on the calendar and try to t- attend because you really can't put a price on some of the moments. Can't put a price on 
um, you know, Justin Seeger sharing, sharing stories, senior remarks from Matt Brooks, um, you know, seeing some of our players who've worked, work extremely hard day in and day out, you know, getting recognized and, and deservingly so. And so it's just, it's a big night and we're just, uh, we thought our, we thought our MC did a fantastic job. <laughs> he, he did all right. <laughs> So they're they're picking on me. If, if if you weren't there, I I was honored, extremely honored to uh, to be the MC of the the first pitch dinner um, on Friday <laughs> night. I'll say this: um, I, I never. That's not anything I ever really thought about doing. Um, but uh, in, in general, as as I've been looking back on it um, over the last few days since, um, you know, my association with with the university has provided some some really cool opportunities and some great memories you know over the years and uh and friday friday's one of them i mean it, it was just it was cool it was getting fun to get up there and do that and um i didn't get fired mid-show so <laughs> that's that's what's cool i mean i'm used to not getting fired around here but i didn't know that was a whole different deal so that was cool and um i appreciate uh the staff and and the, the athletic department and the athletic foundation for for letting me do that that was that was pretty cool um but you you mentioned a couple of these, and we'll we'll come back to them, Coach. But um, uh, Matt Brooks gave senior remarks. I, I don't I don't even know where to, where to go with that with what Matt did. That Matt was Matt was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's Matt Brooks is the epitome of student athlete. I mean, that it's guys like him that motivate you as a coach to to be at your best. Because it, and, and then we have others, but but it's guys like Matt Brooks that deserve our best, and um, because he get he he's brought his best every single day for six years, you know, go, going on six years, uh, and you can't quantify his impact and his um, leadership, his wisdom. The things that he brings to that locker room and to that weight room and to the dugout and to the apartments and all those things, you really, I mean, it, it's, you can't quantify it. You know, there's no metrics for it and, and it all translates to winning and it all translates to pushing us closer to where we all want to go. And, um, you know, I'd, um, I'm so excited for Matt to, to have a big year for us on the mound because I know how much this place means to him. That was that was on full display Friday night. Yeah, Kevin, we've known Matt for for six years now. I mean, we're, we're, did you see that coming? I didn't. No, that was that was kind of a surprise. <laughs> He's yeah. We're all pulling for Matt, and uh, I just don't know how you got on the microphone after that. After after he spoke like that, that was a. Uh, hats off to you for taking the uh, microphone right into the live auction. Yeah. Uh, right in. <laughs> <laughs> to the live auction. I was I was sitting there on the on the stage and 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 you know while he was talking and it was so authentic. That's the word that kept coming to mind. So authentic. I mean, he, the the emotion, the authenticity, the the connection was there. You know, and um, my first thought was, this is so awesome. My second thought was. What am I supposed to say after this? <laughs> just, let's just shut the shutter down. <laughs> I think you said uh, you had a good point of view. You got to see his parents as he was making that speech, and and, and we've met the, his folks, and they're they're great folks as well. Um, good to see them on Friday, but uh, yeah, special family. Yeah, yeah, it was it was so cool. Um, and he did such a great job, and um, man, I, I I think I think what. Um, the, I'll bring back the comment that I recall saying anyway after that as I was trying to put myself back together was if anybody ever asks you why why you support Charlotte baseball, you tell them about Matt Brooks. That's that's enough right there. You know, guy, guys like that, that's that's why you do this. So um, also in, in the, the other speaker that you mentioned, we had some others, a few other folks we'll, we'll talk about here in a second, but you talked about Justin Seeger. Um, being back on campus and, and delivering um, sort of the, the, the keynote address, um, you know, and, and talk about talk about that process. I'm assuming I didn't ask you this before, but I'm assuming that 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 you know you called Sieg and, and got him lined up and all that. So just talk about how that you know kind of how that came to be. Yeah, you know, I mean, for us as coaches, we we always 
we're always talking about, you know, who are the people that, that care the most, you know, who, and who, who are the people that, you know, love this place the most. And, you know, this in my third year of being here, I, you know, Justin's name kept coming up as like, man, every time he's here, it, it, he kind of, you can just kind of feel that when he's here, like when he talks about his experiences here and his days and his teammates and the teams that he played for, you can just hear, um, you can hear the passion for those, those times and, you know, those teams and those times in his voice. And he kind of like, he, he kind of doesn't, you know, he do, kind of doesn't want to leave when he's here. Uh, it's, you know, it's something we kind of notice. It's like people who come back and, there, you know, there's no agenda. There's no need. It's just kind of like he comes back here. And he came back here a few times and, and there was just always just, you know, you could just see how much he cares about this place. So, um, I mean, and it's, and it's a long list, you know, there, you know, there's a long list of people that really, really care about this program. But, um, you know, I, I just felt like him being, him being an alumni, a former player who helped us, uh, you know, have some really great teams in his era and for him to be a conference player of the year and how much he cares about this place, it really was a no brainer. So I just, it was so fun for me to be able to sit back and just kind of hear a lot of stories and, and aspects of his time here that I had never heard before. And that's the best, you know, that to me is the best part is, you know, you get, you get kind of peel back some layers um, from sometimes that, you know, I wasn't a part of. So you get to hear some great stories and he told some great ones and our guys all talked about it. They all said after the event, they said, you know, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool getting to hear a former player share stories uh, very similar of what we're going through and what we're dealing with. And, you know, Campbell even said, you know, maybe one day that, you know, I'll be up there as well. And that's kind of the idea is, you know, we, we want to, we want to support and honor our former players first and foremost. It was, it was pretty cool to hear him speak. He, uh, and he didn't really talk about any games in particular or anything like that. He talked about the, his teammates. He talked about the memories, riding the buses, um, goofing off in the dugout, goofing off in the dorm room. Memories that'll stick with you forever and that are that are off the field. That that's what's uh, what playing college baseball is about to me. It seems like, and uh, a lot of the guys repeat the same stories about their camaraderie, and that's what they miss the most about playing the game of baseball. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I mean that's it's amazing, right? It's 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 like you know you you hear in life. I mean that's it's you you hear that thing. You know it's like um, you know you, you don't um, no nobody gets to nobody gets to you know the end of their life and says I wish I'd spent more time at work or I wish I had you know done these various other things. They what they remember is the interaction, you know the the connection and that kind of thing. And it's it's so cool uh, to see that now. And and I gave the guys this. Um, I, I, during Justin's introduction, that he did, he he left here after three years, was drafted, but he came back and he got his degree. I mean, that's you're talking about being an example. I mean, that's fantastic to 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 not only have a guy that's so accomplished and cares about the program so much, but set that example for our current guys. He went off and he chased his dream, you know, and now he's he he came back to campus. He finished his degree. Um, he's out there in the in the business world. He's an entrepreneur. Um, you know, and and is doing some great things. So it's it's important. I, I always feel like it's it's important to remind these guys, as proud as we are, and as and as closely as we follow their their baseball careers, that yeah, there's going to be a life after that. And yeah, you might be up there on stage one of these days, and it might be introducing you. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, no, and it's it's you know, as you bring that topic up, I mean, I sit here in this chair at this table or the round table when it's here, but sit here, I sit here in this seat every time we sit down with every player and family, uh, with this view and kind of wrap up a visit and we offer an opportunity to come play and be a part of this program. And, um, we, we all, all we really, all we ask are for two things. Um, we ask that every player that comes to this program, uh, give us everything they got to try to help us, get to Omaha and play in the College World Series and compete for national championships. Give us everything you got on and off the field. That encompasses a lot of things. Um, and then the second thing is that you promise us that you graduate, you know, from this great university and, and get your degree, whether that's in three years, four years, five years, ten years, whenever it is. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm still talking to Bryce McGowan and Aaron McKeithen about stay dialed in. Like, you know, even if you got to chip away, 
Um, but that, but the degree that we're talking about here, it will open doors that they don't even know exist. And, you know, I'm, and I'm a testament to that, you know, I, I played and this and that, and, but it's the degree, it's the degree that hangs on my wall that allows me this unbelievable opportunity coaching here at Charlotte. Um, and if I didn't, if I didn't finish the job on that front, then I wouldn't be here. I'm going to talk just a, just a, a moment about um, about Bryce and Aaron, the Q&A they did. Um, a couple things coming into the chat, and I'm just going to go with them because they're one of them's hilarious. Um, our, our boy Feet says, let's go, Niner Nation. What's up, Feet? <laughs> Glad to have you with us. What's up, Feet? Um, and then, and, and this came in from, from Don Woodard, just, just buckle up. Um, which, by the way, if you were listening last week, you didn't figure out that, that Nidra at the front of the show and Don at the end of the show were the same person, kind of are. Now, I've blown Nidra's secret. Um, going to need an alias, <laughs> a new alias. <laughs> going to need a new alias. Uh, Don says he wished he could have been there. Um, and then he says, and, and this I'm just going with it, he, he heard Nick did a terrific job, but now I know why you always wear a baseball cap. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to tell Don, this story is for you and just you. Okay, so if, if you're out there in the audience, just just you know, you're you're just along for the ride. Don, you are so right because I had two different people come up to me on Friday night. I was not wearing a ball cap. Two different people that really only see me at the ballpark start talking to me and mid sentence look at me and say, "Oh, it's you." I don't think I've ever seen you without a ball cap on before. So there were people that, a couple people that were literally confused about who I was. Uh, <laughs> because we can update the dress code for next year. Because, well, you know, some people, hey, some of the VI, the, the, in the VIP area, right, you got a hat, and yeah. those people put their hats on. Yeah, I know so, a guy. We can adjust that. I, I know you know, guy. maybe I should have, I just yeah. got a hat. Maybe I should have just brought one of my caps and put it on. So, and so all players in uniforms too with their number. So we, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, it's all, all out of context. Seeing people without their hats and that's what we should do. Nick in game uniform. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, don't, ever, I don't. I don't. think anybody if you ever get a New Jersey model. I don't. I, I don't know, know about. All, well, you'd have to. You know. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <That'd be laughs> oh God. So Don, that's the true. That's the true story. Is there were a couple people that just weren't sure who I was at first uh, until they realized, oh, it's Nick. He just doesn't have a, a Niner ball cap on. So maybe I'll just have to wear the ball cap next year. So, um, a couple other things here. We did do a Q and A with with Aaron McKeith and Bryce awesome. McGowan, yeah. um, our our newest Pro Niners, and um, pretty cool. Uh, just for the people in the room to get some insight into what's going on as a minor leaguer, um, but also with with all the guys in the room, right? I mean, yeah. they're just one step ahead of them, so they're they're bringing bringing some information back. And and beyond that, I know those guys are around. I it seems like I run into Aaron McKeith and all. All the time when, yeah. when, when you come around here, and he's he's spending time with guys still. Um, so just just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean that's such a proud moment for I think our entire coaching staff is to see you know both Bryce and Aaron put everything they possibly had into last year and that team and. They always kept the team at the at the forefront. I mean, it was whether it was, you know, Bryce Bryce pitching deep into games, or it was coming out of the bullpen to help us win games, or it was Aaron, you know, catching in sixty one, but starting I think fifty nine games behind the plate. Um, they just they laid it on the line for this program every single day, and whether it, you know practice, training, classroom, game, and. Um, you know, we talk to our guys all the time that, you know, everything you put into this program, you know, it will give back to you tenfold, you know. And we – so, you know, we we owe so much to Bryce and to Aaron, and the doors are always wide open for those two guys and every other former player that, you know, that comes back and, and you know, whether it's to speak or to train or to drop by and – um, it's just really, really important. And I was just so proud to hear them speak about the program and their professional careers and 
just they're 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 certainly they're certainly professional players, but they're even better people, and I'm um, just so proud of them. And I couldn't be more excited for to follow them, you know, both in their baseball careers and you know their personal journeys, and and certainly help them any way we possibly can moving forward. Yeah, I think uh, both of them had different paths to the draft, but uh, both of them mentioned that they didn't have a lot of offers before they came here, and they ended up developing into major league draft picks. Uh, and that's a testament to you guys that worked with them for the time that you've been here, uh, developing those guys and, and, and their work ethic also, developing them from not many offers guys to major league players or professional baseball players. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, you know, it just, it takes everybody. It starts with them. I mean, they're, they're, um, they're the ones with, with incredibly high ceilings and, very high floors um <laughs> you know i mean they're they're really good players and you know again just it it's i think our just our approach as a coaching staff that we and, and you know with the help of the grand slam club which i'm just telling you like it's not a it's real like it's it's the every everyone that contributes to the grand slam club it goes straight to our players it goes straight to technology it goes straight to you know weight room materials it goes straight to nutrition um you know at some point like we really do want to i mean i know i heard nate talk about um the emphasis we put on sleep i mean we put a lot of emphasis on sleep like i would love to have aura rings and you know or whoop bands for every player that ever plays in our program because it's all of those things are so important now to competing at the highest level and there's edges and there's wins and everything and you know so again those are really good players that you know with the help of so many we've we've been fortunate the last two to three years to really kind of acquire some things that you know again they've picked up the tools themselves and and done the work so um we're just just gonna be more proud of them Woody, for a second, I thought you were about to tell us that the ceiling is the roof. <laughs> it is. It absolutely is. The ceiling is the roof. The goat said it, so it's got to be true. Yeah, it's a little Michael Jordan joke. If you if if, if you don't get it, it's on YouTube. Go go check it out. Yeah. Um, you also named. Uh, uh, we, we're going to get around to talking some some baseball for this weekend. I promise, folks. Um, you also rolled out a couple of new gold standard yeah. uh, players. We, we we definitely need to to mention them in Spencer Geesting and Jake Cunningham. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it's 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 pretty neat for our coaching staff because it has to be unanimous. It has to be unanimous amongst all coaches and support staff members. And uh, there's there's a lot of players that we we all we say it's only a matter of time, you know. But then we we say. You know, but but these two in particular, we felt like this was the right time. Um, we feel like both Jake and Spencer are leaving a legacy here. Um, they're doing, they're working at a level at which is very uncommon and um, hard to do. And again, they're 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 all about um, their teammates and this program first, and they're willing to do you know whatever it takes to help the team win. So you know, it seems like very basic things, but I assure you that the level at which they're doing it every day is, is not normal. And it's just very much appreciated by our entire coaching staff and want to make sure that those two guys know going into the season, how highly we think of them and regard them and they've earned it. And the last, uh, last couple of, of cool moments we'll just quickly touch on, uh, before we, if we move along here is, um, uh, Austin Knight got his, his all American certificate, uh, there on Friday night, he did not know that was coming. Right? Uh, did, did his dad was in? A t- did his dad know that was coming? Mm-mm. He didn't either. Mm-mm. Okay, because uh, because his dad was looking pretty. He was yeah. That was a pretty cool moment too. <laughs> Palmer was was you know that yeah that explains that he didn't know it was coming either. <laughs> okay, um, so that was a neat moment. You know to get to, to honor an All American there on stage, and also you guys paid tribute to uh, to Sidney Pike. Um, he's kind of the he's kind of the guy that gets stuff done around here um, behind the scenes, and um, that was uh, a framed. He got Sydney was honored with a, a framed copy of the scorecard from the Maryland NCAA tournament game, right? The, Correct. Yeah, game one. Game one. Game one against Maryland uh, in the in the regional in Greenville. Yeah, we 
Uh, we we framed a, a, co- a copy of the dugout card, which um, I've just always I've always I don't know what where it started, but I've always thought that that dugout cards when when kept neatly and accurately, I think they tell a pretty cool story, you know. And here we are, nine months removed, or however far, eight months removed, to where. You know, you go back and you look at that lineup and you look at the pitching changes and you look at the mound visits and you look at, you know, Maryland's team and stuff like that. It just tells a story and we don't. It's an artifact. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's unique. There's, there's only, there's, there's nothing, there's no duplicate of that game. Um, Whole nother tangent, but very similar to chess. You know, no two games are played the same unless it's like four moves or less, but Similar to baseball, it's no two games are the same. Every game is different, and we don't, we do not win that game without everything Sydney Pike brings to our program on a daily basis. I believe that. Yeah, awesome dude. So many awesome guys. Well, Kevin, you want to talk about baseball? Yeah, we got it. I mean, we we do have some baseball to talk about, right? I mean, next week we'll be talking about results, and that's going to be awesome. Can't wait to get into that. But hey, we got a we got a we got a weekend to preview. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got great little uh, the USF Invitational down in Tampa this weekend. Um, talked about a little bit last week. Uh, it's kind of got like a regional feel to it with with the four teams that are in there. Um, I'll go through the through the list real quick, and we can talk a little bit about each team if you want, Coach. Uh, Absolutely. We'll end with Louisville since Louisville's on the mind right now. Sure. But uh, USF, you guys, you guys know how I operate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're trying to get you back to yeah to your got comfort it. level. Um, USF, uh, they're, they're picked to finish sixth in the AAC this year, but uh, last year went to their first Super Regionals. So Super Regional, they won the AAC tournament, uh, got hot at the right time, won their regional, and won the Florida Regional. Uh, I think they beat Miami and Florida down in there. Um, they've been in four regionals the past 10 years, so definitely a program on the rise, uh, similar to our um, – with our program here, we shared a conference with them for for years, uh, mm-hmm. in in the old days and the old Conference USA days, and we're getting ready to share a conference with them in the AAC soon. I, I want to say that went back to like 1976. Yeah, very we've first. We've been in a conference with South Florida since like 1976. Yeah, I think our first conference tournament game was against South Florida. So, yeah. Um, coach, you got any anything you want to say about uh, the golden bulls down in South Florida yeah no I mean it's coach uh, Billy mole is uh, he's a first class coach um, he's been doing a long time um, I don't know how many head coaches or former pitching coaches but it's there's I think it's we're in the minority and I and so it's kind of a little fraternity I guess like you know we kind of look out for one another in a sense obviously until the game starts um, and that sort of thing. But just, you know, uh, he he reached out um, a number of months months ago, uh, in the, I think last summer or previously, and, and had mentioned that they needed – they wanted one more team to join this weekend. And he was adamant that they, they wanted four teams that, that had competed in the NCAA tournament um, at the regional, super regional, College World Series level. Um, in the recent um, years, and so it was a real honor for him to reach out to us after last year and invite us to play in this event um, because it's three it's three it's three opponents that I know share the, the same or similar goals that we have, and it's gonna be it's gonna be three dogfights with talking about South Florida that, would, uh, that on Sunday, um, but all, every opponent you know has has really high goals, and we know that going in, and they've got. They've got a really talented lineup with a lot of returners, and they've got I think they've got two starting pitchers that are in the top 150 um, for, according to D1 Baseball. So they're going to be a complete team that's well coached, uh, and you know it's going to be when we get there, game three, it'll be a a really good challenge. They're kind of playing the the no respect card, being picked to finish sixth in the AC after they just won a tournament and kind of had their best year. Um, Best year in, in school history, but um, yeah, uh, there's a lot of good teams in that conference. But uh, we'll see how we'll see how it goes on Sunday. Six yeah. does feel a little low for them. Yeah, but, yeah. they got one. So it was interesting. They picked six in the coaches' poll, but they got one first place vote. Uh, mm. <laughs> but anyway, mm. little um, Niner connection to USF. Uh, their associate head coach Bo Durkak was hitting coach here for a good period of time under. 
uh, under Coach Hibbs. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, going to be a familiar face down there to, to Niner Nation. Yeah, yeah. The, the Charlotte UCF thing. That's there's just there's a lot of familiarity there, just mm-hmm. on a number of levels. <laughs> Longevity, history, current current staff. It's there's just a lot of a lot of cross pollination there. That's um, now I have it on good authority that they have a awesome Saturday tailgate scene. So I'm going to be checking that out. So South Florida folks, look 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 out for. I don't know. I'm going to pass it to tailgate lot. I want to the audience is on. in shock. Right. <laughs> hey, look, we got to find out what's going on. This is where this is an AAC environment, right? I mean, yeah, we've but, got yeah. to know what it's like. So I'm going to go check it out. There you go. Recon. This is a recon. Recon. Trip. That's right. Yeah. Um, Saturday we're playing UConn. Uh, UConn is, has been in six regionals the last ten years. Won the Big East tournament and the regular season last year to to get into the. Um, the regionals and uh, picked first again in the Big East for for this season, Coach. Uh, what can you tell us about the Huskies? Yeah, I mean, Coach Coach Pender, their head coach, and Coach McDonald, their pitching coach, are two you know two extremely respected coaches. And and I'm I'm remiss leaving out the rest of their coaching staff, but that staff in general, I think they're like one of the longest tenured staff in the country as far as being together. And you do a quick Google so- search on. Connecticut baseball pitchers just start there. It's a pretty impressive list of arms that have gone on to professional baseball and major league baseball from that program. So, I mean, you can start right there. I mean, it's going to be tough to it's going to be tough to tough to score against them. Um, as they always have really fantastic arms. Um, you know, they have a tremendous talent in Reggie Crawford, who was on Team USA last summer. That's a two-way player for them. Who, unfortunately, um, I don't. I don't believe he's going to be. He's going to be able to play this spring with an injury. Um, but he should be a. He's probably going to be a high first-round draft pick out of their program this year. Just an electric arm and bat. And um, you know, for me, I I, men- I mention him because, you know, we always we always want to compete at our best, and we always want to face our opponents best. You know, so I'm. I'm I was sorry to hear that, that he got injured injured this fall, but he's got a, he's going to be he's going to have a chance to play major league baseball for a long time, and they just have a heck of a program. Certainly one of the best in the Northeast, but um, year in and year out, they're they're there at the finish line with the NCAA tournament and that sort of thing. Yeah, and we'll move you back to Louisville now, back to your comfort zone. All right, um, now, now, now he's in his now he's in his groove. Now he gets to talk about the next game. Yeah. <laughs> Louisville, uh, perennial regional regional team, four College World Series trips, um, last ten years, two supers in that time frame. Um, I mean, perennial all Omaha team. I had a kind of a down year for them last year, but uh, they're definitely looking to bounce back. Um, they lost a lot from that roster, but uh, brought in a lot of uh, new guys to to help fill the void. Um, anything you could tell us about the Cardinals, Coach? Yeah, I mean they have a pretty pretty. St- lengthy and storied history as far as uh, trips to Omaha and super regionals and hosting regionals. And, um, you know, I think, I think coach McDonald is in the ABCA hall of fame and uh, he's got one of the best pitching coaches in the country, Roger Williams, that I think we touched on last, last week. He actually recruited me to play college baseball back in the early two thousands. So I, you know, I think, I couldn't think any higher of him as a as a coach and as a person and you know he works with their pitchers and then Eric Snyder their third base coach is one of the best recruiters and hitting coaches in the country um so you know regardless of you know you can you can you know you can do your homework on last year's team all you want you can look at how many guys were drafted but they're gonna that program's gonna be you know, at the top of the ACC year in and year out, and I've seen I've seen it enough firsthand to know that. So, yeah, we it's going to be a really great opportunity for us Friday night to uh, or afternoon to uh, to play against them. You know, because that's as good as a program in the country as there is, and I couldn't be more excited for our guys to to get to play our game in that environment with that opportunity. Yeah. Sounds like four hungry teams with a lot to prove. Um... It's a great way to start the season, Coach. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm really, I really am, and I know our guys are too. So, now, as far as we know, uh, these games are going to be on ESPN Plus, 
we think. Right. I We're think fairly so. sure they're mm-hmm. going to be on ESPN Plus. So if you're uh, if you have that subscription and, and it's not, it's 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 well worth it yeah. to to get that. Um, so check into that, and you should be able to see the games. There's going to be, uh, you know, one thing we we always comment on is is baseball families travel really well. Uh, all, all baseball families across, you know, the, when when you come into the haze and we've got a home series, and you know everybody's got you know quote unquote fans, and people say, I can't believe so and so brought fans on the road. I was like, no, those aren't. Those are parents, which you know is awesome. It's really a part of baseball culture. You get to, to meet people from from all over the place. But um, we've got four guys on the roster. I think I'm stating that right. Four guys on the roster from the state of Florida, including Austin Knight. Um, and it, I'm, I'm anticipating there being a pretty big niner, uh, pretty big niner gathering down there uh, on uh, starting on Friday with with all the families. Yeah, I've had I've had. So many um, family members, former players, um, you know, and and others reach out to me really in the last few weeks and just say, "Hey, I'm, I booked a flight. I'm going. <laughs> you know, I booked a you know I booked a rental car. I booked a hotel. I'm going." So, um, and that's you know that's incredible. I mean that that's that's a big deal, and um, because we feel we feel that energy. When we when we played the game last year, I mean, the only game we were really allowed to have fans was UNC Wilmington, mm. the last the last series, and uh, we were only allowed X number of tickets for the NCAA tournament, but we sold them all. And so, you know, to to all the family members and friends and former players and fans that are watching right now, it, it's it matters. I mean, it absolutely matters, and our dugout feeds off of that energy. When it comes time to uh, to play the game, so uh, yeah, it means a great deal, and I hope that everybody is jumping on a plane or driving in a car to come see us play. They understand how much we appreciate it, and we're we're going to do everything we can to put on the uniform and represent you know this program and this university at the highest level. Yeah, just doing this real quick here. I got Quentin Martinez from Orlando, Tony Rossi from Sanford, Florida. Uh, of course, Austin is from Jacksonville, and there's another Jacksonville. Who am I missing here? Two guys from Jacksonville. And, of course, as I'm efforting this, I swear there was Michelson. A- Michelson. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Just you know, couldn't read fast enough on the spot. Michelson. Yeah. So hell, there should be a healthy Florida yeah. contingent down there. And, and not only that, but some of us Niners are heading down there. So, uh, hey, if if, um, if you – if if you are uh, been following the show or following us on social media or whatever, I'll have a ball cap on, so I should be I'll, – I'll, I'll be recognizable. So uh, say hello. Looking forward to that. Um, going to be – going to be a big weekend. But, you know, you you just – you touched on something that we'll, uh, we'll touch on just quickly. How far we've come in the last year, because opening weekend last year, we, we were – not you, but the rest of us were standing on a hill. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> over here, we weren't even allowed in the stadium. We were standing on a hill outside the stadium, um, straining our necks to get the right view of the field. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, people really care, and and uh, our like you know, our guys feel it, and it matters, and so um, we just appreciate everybody's support, and um, you know, so. Just continue, continue to, you know, buy season tickets. As I know, we're almost we're almost sold out of the lower bowl, and you know, con- continue to block off, you know, weekends and midweek games of your schedule to come out here to the haze and and watch this team play because um, that just adds fuel. That just adds fuel to our fire when this place is packed out. And I'll drop that in um, 704-687-4949, ticket office, charlotte49ers.com. So um, they would love to sell you tickets or help you join the Grand Slam Club without a doubt. Um, Coach, I usually ask you for your last word, but that kind of felt like a last word. You or you, you want to go with that or you, you want to you pile on top of that? Yeah, no, I mean, I'll just <laughs> – I guess I'll, I'll, I'll finish with where we started. You know, I was just – I was sitting over there just listening to Nate talk about his recruiting experience and, and his story. And, um, you know, I just think he I – think, I think what he's – he and his family's belief in this program from that moment when – 
you know, he committed to come here. Um, you know, he, he's, we talk, we, you know, we talk about program changers. Nate Furman's a program changer and, uh, we don't accomplish what we accomplished last year without, without him. And, um, you know, I just think, uh, I think he just, he, his, his spirit and his makeup just spreads throughout our entire dugout. And that motor is incredible and it's inspiring. And, and again, it just pushes all of us to, to compete at a higher level. So, um, you know, really proud of Nate and, and what he's doing for our program on and off the field is I know he's a sack leader, um, here in the athletic department, representing all student athletes and incredible student. And, uh, just couldn't be more excited to hear his DMX walkout song as I know that's a, that's become a staple in the program. <laughs> Well, walk up songs are important, you know. I mean, we, just, we do we do we do talk about them a lot. We do not they're, just on the show, but yeah, they're off, important. Off there, they matter. Um, one quick thing, uh, kind of breaking news, I guess, uh, from today. Um, Austin Knight was was named to the uh, the preseason uh, Golden Spikes Award watch list. Mm. Uh, so he's yes. he's on that watch list again for for the second year in a row. Uh, so congrats to to Austin Knight. Um, Last year was a semifinalist, so um, we'll see how this year goes. Hopefully, time for another campaign. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Time to get it. Yeah, he'll be he'll be the he'll be the first one to tell you that 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 the it's the postseason awards he's he's going after. Right. So that and and he means it when he says it. So I'm just, but I couldn't be more excited. I think I think Major League Baseball missed out on him. I think Major League Baseball missed out on David McCabe and a few others, and couldn't be more thankful that they're here and we get to be around them every day so getting ready to enjoy this ride those boys are the appropriate mix of uh humility and they are equal parts humble and cold-blooded yep (laughs) all at the same time it's it's, they don't stop it's fantastic um kevin we don't have to try to talk ourselves out of being uh, being excited anymore you ready for this yeah let's do it it's on. All right, folks. And we're going to, again, thank, really appreciate Nate stopping by. We're going to try to do that more often, rotate yep. some players in and out of here. Um, and um, we got all kind of things on tap, players, coaches, and, and just, just get some different perspectives in here and let you hear from some different folks. So that's going to do it for tonight, folks. We are, we are beyond out of time, so we're going we're gonna to wrap it up here. But look for this podcast wherever you find your podcast. Make sure to click subscribe in order to be notified of new content. Content. Find Diamond Niner Report on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Still not doing TikTok. Uh, we love hearing from all of you. If you're old-fashioned like us, just say hello at the ballpark. Look for me at the ballpark in Tampa. I'll have my hat on and everything. So, for Kevin, Producer Brad, and Coach Woody, this has been Nick. We'll be seeing you real soon at the Hayes. Go Niners. Go Niners.